the day has come. I now am in possession and I'm the proud owner of a Data General Nova. Not just a front panel, not just a board, but most of it. Maybe not the whole thing, but most of it. So let's have a look, shall we? I'm going to start with the front panel and the chassis. So let's see what we have here. We're going to widen out just a little bit and we're going to have a look at what is available here. All right, so I have, I, I got this all as one piece with boards in the chassis already, but I had to um, take it on an airplane. Now, I don't know if anyone has ever tried to take a Data General Nova full chassis with boards on an airplane, but it's very difficult to do. Of course, I had to check it, um, but I disassembled it in a moderate way and I packed it really, really, really well and checked it in two separate boxes. And one of the things I needed, decided I needed to do was to take off the front face. I wrapped it up and packed it with the front face on, and then the linear length was over the limit for the airline. So anyway, I took it all apart and disassembled it. And this is a good exercise. I'm glad I very, I'm very much glad I did this because I got to see how the front face comes off and I got to see the simplicity and elegance of the front face. So here we go. The front face is a Data General Nova 1200. Now, I believe that the boards that I have uh, are for a Data General Nova 800, the slightly faster ones, if I understand that correctly. But I may not understand that correctly. But this looks to be in very, very nice shape. And we have some fantastic handwritten instructions here, which I think are awesome and very vintage. So let's have a look at the back of this. This is just fantastic fantastic early 70s circuitry we have a card edge connector here very high quality one with guards around it I'm not exactly sure if we can qualify that as guards but it's definitely uh, a little bit beefier than most card edge connectors that I've seen we have an aluminum brace here and of course this this uh, this circuit board well this circuit board looks old school looks like it was hand drawn and probably etched um, from the hand drawing and certainly not done on a robot computer as of yet thus the curves that's how I understand that anyway but when I look at the drawing I always think these things on the data general novas are cool that these are kind of cloth these are cloth uh, cloth like labels you could see that and they've had pen handwritten on them for the drawing and surprisingly Fifth, nearly 50 years later, because I, the dates I find in this are from right around 1970, nearly 50 years later, the adhesive for that label is sticking on very well. Now, I'm not going to try to peel that off, but it's certainly not flaking off. So I'm really quite impressed with that. Now, I'm not going to be brave enough just yet to take, the, uh, to take the board off, because I've been told that these bulbs are set inside of fiber or wood here and that they're very very difficult and very delicate and so I don't know if they work or not yet but there you go now one of the things I thought was curious was this thing right here when you turn this little dial which of course isn't a dial it looks like it's kind of a latch but I can't figure out what it is supposed to latch into but it was really very simple to and there's one on each side here but it was really very simple to take off because there were simply six screws that fit through the flange. Let me uh, go on a little bit wider here. There were simply six screws. I guess little nuts. Two, three, four, five, six. And they simply felt uh, fit through the front flange. And let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that front flange. Here it is. That's a bit close to the camera, even with the wide angle lens. But these are the holes right here. Uh, here, one, two, and three. And on the other side, four, five, and six, I believe. And they just fit in there very nicely. So this is really the first time for me seeing um, a chassis and a backplane in person. So this is really very cool. This is the first time for me to see the card edge connector here that goes into the, the uh, front face 
or as I understand it, the console or control panel. Um, this evidently is reserved, this top one evidently is reserved for additional lights and switches that are at the top uh, as an option, which this Data General Nova did not have. Now the Entrex 480 absolutely had that because I featured that on my site at Entrex480.com and uh, I try to give as much data about that Entrex specific add-on to the DCC-116 clone of the Data General Nova possible. So all of these projects are a little bit related. Okay, so anyway, I'm, I'm really quite impressed uh, as I look at this. One of the first things that I notice is that this card edge connector is not used on, on this particular model. As we see right here, we have the lower one, and I this folds over right like that. We have the lower one here, and there is no upper one. So that one's not used, and it seems that it just goes directly to directly to the wire wrap pins right here. The connectors just go to two rows of wire wrap pins and nothing is connected to them. They're not connected to anything else on the backplane board, which I think is probably the way it should be. So let's have a bit of a look. Let's, let's flip it over to the front here, uh, or I should say the side, the side where the boards enter, just to give it a good look. Here we have these beautiful card edge connectors, all 17 rows of them. And we have um, another tag that shows a drawing number. Now I believe, uh, I'm not sure what this one goes for because, well, maybe it's for the chassis. I don't know. I guess you can have drawings for chassis because, you know, it is a manufactured thing. You don't just need drawings for circuit boards. So maybe that's what that is. So let's get a good look at that. But my, my goal here is to just get a closer up look to the chassis backplane and front panel of a Data General Nova that I've ever seen, certainly online and absolutely on YouTube because, well, nobody else has taken one apart on YouTube, so I'm honored to be able to be able to do that. So there we go. Do we have some numbers underneath there? Yes, we do. And there seem even some more underneath there that I can't see and I'd have to disassemble it in order to see it and I'm not going to do that, but there we go. All right. Let's have a look here, widen out a bit. So this is the entire side. And these are the handwritten labels that show what boards were in here at one point in time. And uh, I think that's pretty good. I won't even get to the boards that I got this with, but I know that they weren't necessarily the ones that matched this. Um, so we won't necessarily go there, but at one point these were the these were the things that were in there. As you can see, it's changed. You just cross it out and draw in a new thing. I think that's fantastic there. There we go. Nice, good close-up picture. Okay. So let's go back to the front here. I'm going to give a little commentary on my interpretation, interpretation, on my reaction to the lock. I've always found, you know, having worked with computers starting with the fact that they have keyboards and at least dumb terminals, if not keyboards and monitors, or, you know, in the case of the Commodore 64, where you plug it into your television back in the day. This was way after you had a lock on your computer. Well, this was, of course, wasn't made for home use. This was made for industrial and professional use. But I always thought that this was kind of an interesting thing where you could just turn it off with the lock, the cylinder lock. Well, it's kind of anticlimactic because it just runs a limit switch, which connects to two pins on the back plane. So if you get access to this level of it, that lock isn't going to stop you because there's a limit switch right there on the uh, on the cam. And I guess there's another one that isn't even connected, but these two yellow wires are just going to some place that I have not yet mapped on the back side of the back of the of the back plane. But let's have a look at the back plane. Look at this fantastic backplane. This is the first time for me to see a true Data General Nova backplane. I did buy a Data General Eclipse one, but it's distinctly different. And so I'm not even going to uh, make a comparison there because I don't think that's relevant for what I want to do. I really want to document the early versions or this particular early version of the Data General Nova. So here it is. We have a drawing number right here again with the same label. I think those are very, very cool. I'll get a little bit of a close-up on that so that we could read it if we want to. 
There we go. I'm going to leave that like that. One of the things I really thought was cool was uh, when looking at the copyright here. Copyright 1970. This thing is nearly... Near, I mean, I don't know if it was manufactured in 1970, at least the backplane, but let's assume that it was. It's nearly 50 years old, right? The year is 2019 right now, and so it's nearly 50 years old. It's 49. That's, that's a good age for a computer, or even parts of a computer. So this is, this is going to be the oldest computer or parts of computer that I have, that I have owned. This is kind of a, kind of a cool thing. Now, um, just going with general reactions here, uh, or general um, commentary, bouncing around without any particular pattern. Um, one of the things I find is interesting is, um, well, uh, I was expecting to see marks for slots 1 through 17, and we do so see those here. It's nice that those numbers are, are, well, uh, are, are, are well put together there, or uh, easy to distinguish. And where the label covers it, thankfully somebody didn't peel off the label. They just wrote, hand wrote, 4, 5, and 6 next to that, where the label was covering over the, the numbers. Now we have 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 17 here, which is being hidden by that wire wrap. Now, one of the things I wasn't paying much attention to and wasn't really tuned into is these 30-pin um, connectors. I believe that they're 30. Each one of them, yep, yeah, I think they're 30. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, it's 24. That one's 24. What's this one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This one's 20. Sorry, I didn't mean 30 pin. This one's 20. This one's 24. This one's missing a few pins over here. This one's missing a few pins. So these are interesting connectors. I don't know if these are just, well, whatever connector you need, you'd want to hook something up or if they're for something specific because I have yet to see a schematic of this backplane. So I've seen a chart for the, uh, for the Entrex 480 Nixdorf 620, uh, which shows all the backplane connections, but it's a chart. It's not a schematic. So. I don't think it addresses these things at all. And we have the same things down at the bottom. Let's have a look at those. Yep, same things right down here at the bottom. Now, this is an interesting one. Well, let me get have a look at these first, just so I get this good and well and documented. It looks like this is um, a 20 pin. And what is this one, a 34 pin? No, that's 20. Looks like a 20. Yep, these are all 20 pins. Now, this is, this is what I thought was very interesting. And we'll get in there. A lot of things were interesting. Let me go to this, because I'm looking at it right now. Do you see these colorful pins right here? It looks like Someone has stripped wire of this color of orange, yellow, and blue, and they've just slipped the wire insulation over the pins. I don't think that that's a data general thing, but I don't actually know. And so in this case, we have this pattern here. Let's see how I can see it the best. Maybe like that? There we go. Yeah, now we can see that pattern where we have this row of yellow and the horizontal rows of orange and then there's the occasional blue right there. And I don't know if that was someone's um, mapping of this or if Data General did that, but they don't look like, you know, they're factory perfect cut. They look like hand cut pieces of insulation. So that's kind of why I have a feeling that someone who was wanting to keep track of the complexities of this particular backplane, just cut those and stuck them on there. But a very cool thing, nonetheless, um, which certainly grabbed my eye. And uh, remember, I was talking about the upper, uh, the upper control panel or front panel 
uh, connector. These are just the pins and on both sides you can see that the card edge connector just goes right to the pins. Uh, I think the top goes to the back row and the bottom goes to the front row. Top meaning the side that we're looking at right now. As it faces you this would be the left side and the back side of the back plane would be the right side as we're looking at it right now. Anyway, um, for what that's worth. One of the things I'm going to want to be figuring out, of course, is all what all of the voltage are, is what all of the voltages are here, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I think it's pretty cool that we see at least some markings giving me voltages here, plus five volts, S13, S15, plus five volts. Not sure what the S13 and 15 are here because we're on rows 12 and 13. Not sure what that is. Um, plus 5 volts there under the label and uh, here's an interesting one INTR and DCHP don't know what that is but that's clearly ground and that is excellent to see such things so we have some markings here and if we were to look over at this edge we would see something similar we have the plus, plus 5 volts there Um, according to what I can tell, this thing runs off of plus 5 volts, minus 5 volts, plus 15 volts, minus 15 volts, and then a line clock of 30 volts, which oscillates with the 60 cycle of the North American power grid. Something like that. I was told that. I haven't figured that out by looking at this yet. Because... Well, we'll get to the power supply situation in a minute. But for right now, this just jumps out at me. I had a good chuckle when I saw this because I've done this before where I plugged a ribbon cable into something and I put power to ground, a power on one side and ground on the other. And it created a toaster element out of one of the wires in my ribbon cable. And I created an effect exactly like this. So someone, someone in its lifetime has actually done that, accidentally done that. And I don't see any any damage at all to the to the backplane board just this particular cable but it's plugged into one of the 20 pin uh, connectors there on the backplane and this goes over to this side now let's have a look let's have a look over here let's do a wide angle shot here for a moment uh-huh and I've often uh, in studying these one of the things that seems to have the least amount of photographic coverage is this end right here, particularly the back side, but this right here. And what do we have here? Well, we have this angle. And I guess on some chassis, it's a, it's a right angle. But in some chassis, it's not quite a right angle. If, uh, if we were to look at this from the top, which I'm going to do here right now, we would see that, see, it's not exactly a right angle. That's not a 90 degree angle there. That's um, greater than 90 degrees. So instead of that being a 90 degree angle there, it's offset a little bit. But this seems to be this magic place where you have the inputs and outputs. And I guess it's fully customizable for the client, customer, user, what have you, to put their own plugs here and then wire them with wire wrap to the back plate, which seems like a really innovative system. And you've got plenty of room for these things here. And I guess you can configure these any way you want them to. So, uh, But this has always been a mystery to me, just exactly how you got things in and out of the machine, uh, data in and out of the machine. And it looks like this is, this is the designated space for this on this back panel here. One of the things that I uh, really noticed is uh, these nine pin, I believe they're nine pins here. And only one of them, most of them are connected uh, via... Um, wire wrap, but one of them is actually, I believe, soldered directly to the backplane. And so let's have a look here. There we go. So there's four holes for these nine pin connectors, or at least this size of connector. And I believe that this one right here is soldered directly to the, the back plane. The back plane has a board extension that goes right out to it. This one next to it, uh, that's wire wrap wire, which is, you know, wired down to some place on the, on the back plane. But this one, so this one just goes right to the back plane, which leads me to believe that, is that intended to be the default serial console for this thing? 
maybe I haven't found in the documentation yet where it says one way or the other, but this is putting together reading documentation without ever seeing the machine now, with finally for the first time actually seeing the physical mechanics of the machine, the physical layout, the physical structure. Let's have a look in there. I wonder if I can get that with the camera. Uh, it's a little bit difficult with that cable in there. There we go. I think that'll do it. Let's see if I can zoom in on that where we see the board just going right in there. This is kind of a precarious thing because I'm holding this very heavy chassis with one hand and I have a remote control for the camera to make it zoom in the other. So this is kind of a tricky thing. There we go. It's working. Glad I had that remote nearby. Aha! Uh -huh. I like it. That's what I wanted to see. Now we're focused on this edge, not in here, but I'm not so sure I can oh, get the camera to do what I want it to do as easily. Sorry, guys. Uh, that's probably as good as I'm going to get. So we see where the board will go right to the uh, one of these two uh, COM port style plugs right here. Is it? Sorry. Yep, that one right there. Not this one where we see the wires that go to the wire wrap, but this one. So I haven't really gotten in there yet, and I'm going to now stop torturing everyone with bad focus. But there are the connectors right there. See, my hand's in the way when I point to it. Right there. This is the plug that's gone right to the soldered right to the back plane. All right, now let's zoom out, go widescreen again, so to speak. Look at the whole thing as a as a package. Put on my wide-angle lens here. Sorry. And let's have a look at the back. There's our side again. But the back. Here we go. These are where the power supplies go. I guess with the half height machine, the smaller machine, you only have one power supply. With the double height, where you've got more boards, you've got two power supplies. And I've studied a little bit of the circuits for this. I have most of the circuitry from the DCC-116. I don't see any power supply circuitry from the Nova, but assuming the, D the digital computer controls copied them verbatim, I should be looking at the same schematic for the most part. But, as you can see, I don't have power supplies. I just don't have them. Now, something else that I had to figure out that I don't have is how does the how do the power supplies connect to the backplane? Well, we see right here that there's these card edge connectors. You can see one right here. There's another one underneath these uh, these plugs that are installed. But there's one for the lower power supply and one for the upper power supply. But then I was looking at pictures that I've seen of power supplies, uh, particularly the ones on. Uh, from Dominique on my site at uh, entrex480.com um, and well as well as one that I archived that uh, went across eBay I don't know May of 2017 and I'm going to show you a picture of that one actually because that's how I figured out that there's another piece between the power supply and the boards that I'm missing and it's this right here so there we go so this is the back of one that I didn't buy and there's these boards right here and it looks like the power supplies plug have card edge that plug into these boards right here lower power supply and upper power supply and these things clearly have capacitors and resistors on them and I was trying to find a schematic form so I could see what they what they do but and we could see that these things now have card edge that go into uh, that go into here that go into the back plane so those cards those connector boards are missing, and so I thought that was important to uh, important to make note of that this chassis does not have them, and I'm going to have to be very careful as I engineer a power supply for this thing that I take into account whatever magical circuitry, if any, that these boards are providing 
um, other than just the uh, the straight voltages and of course making sure how to get all the pins right on the card edge connectors what have you so this is going to be quite the quite the challenge to figure out you know how to get this thing to power up so I'll be playing with um, I think just the back plane and testing some voltages and searching through some schematics for the next few weeks um, but it's certainly fun it's certainly fun certainly is an exciting project for me to learn things at this particular level on a machine that is actually now older than I am all right one more thing I guess I wanted to notice I, th I thought th this was on these uh, connectors on the back here's where somebody had just put a piece of scotch tape and he written with pencil or pen the button panel <laughs> we have no idea what that might have been the button panel there we go right there that's kind of a classic but then what another thing I thought was cool though is actually this because this looks like this looks like uh, the data general Nova uh, actual identifier card for option location connector option and slot well here we see it's actually had something that looks like it was um, you know imprinted in there um, a bit like taking uh, taking dies to a hammer uh, against steel of some kind or metal but this is just this is kind of a this isn't metal and it isn't paper it's like a foil uh, but it's a very stiff foil and it's held up very well over the years so we can see where that's kind of imprinted right there and it looks like these are just handwritten on or hand scrawled in there kind of scratched in there uh, that's a slot three then we have four five and six and there's really nothing left there and the rest of it remains blank as if it was never filled in but I do think that this is very very cool um, some other things I noticed uh, one of the things I looked at is, you know, I needed to make this thing a little bit smaller to take it apart. And it seemed that that becomes difficult because what I didn't want to do is compromise any of the rivets in this beautiful aluminum chassis. Um, and we can see that these are riveted here. So it's not all entirely put together with screws. So that's kind of something to be uh, thoughtful of if you're thinking about disassembling and shipping one of these. My hope is that that doesn't happen very often anymore. And when you do, it's kind of a special thing where you need to make special arrangements like I did. Uh, on the bottom side, we see this open recessed area here. Let me go a little, a little bit wider here. We see this open recessed area here. And then there's this, which looks like some cords can go through. And then there's this area right here. Now, on, the, uh, on some pictures, on, on a picture of one Entrex 480 chassis that I didn't buy from 2000. Uh, 17 which was in Katy Texas I did see that there was a wire going through here that just looked like a standard um, peripheral power supply uh, Molex of 12 and 5 um, one of these actually seemed to be just poking through there uh, and I thought well that was more modern than I was expecting on this thing but I guess they were feeding power supply you know power down under here but uh, have having not actually seen that in person I don't know where the other end of the wire went whether it went to the front panel or some other magical place magical mysterious place on here but this is definitely interesting as my first look of uh, the uh, chassis and back plane and even the details of the front panel of a data general nova and so uh, i just wanted to share it with anyone out there that wanted to see that on youtube for the first time this level of detail so I guess that's all I have to offer. Hopefully it was valuable to you. If not, if at least entertaining. And thanks for watching.